Well, hello, Pray and Share Warriors. How are y'all doing? I am doing great. We, it was Friday. Yay! And I have a new favorite at Dairy Queen. I wish I didn't know that they had this, but you got to go try it. If you like pecan pie like I do, I love pecan pie. They have a pecan pie blizzard. Oh, it is so awesome. Mm. I may have to go back tomorrow and get another one, but probably not. I got a mini. They're just so tiny. They're so tiny. That, that can't be bad for you. Anyway, just wanted to clue you in on that. If you live in Texas, then, you know, you need to go to Dairy Queen and get you one of those because they are good. Or get a mini. Get a mini because it's not bad. It's not good, but it's not as bad as large. I wanted a large. Okay. Well, tonight, Pray and Share Warriors, we are going to talk about Psalm 16, and the little thumbnail that I sent on uh, my Facebook page, which didn't send one on YouTube. I'm working on revamping YouTube. Anyway, it's a beautiful picture, and it had one of the verses that we're going to read. And also, I did a song share this afternoon. So I've got that to read to you, and we are going to do our salvation with this. So we're going to, it's going to kind of be a hodgepodge. We're going to be talking about uh, faith over fear and not being concerned and all been out of shape about the things that are going on because we have no control. Uh, the most control that we have is prayer. We can pray to the God that has control about the things that um, we would like changed, if it's his will. It may not be his will. It may be his plan for things to be exactly as they are. We don't know, and we can't judge. So let's do some prayer. Let's read Psalm 16. Well, let's read my song share. Let's read Psalm 16. And let's do a salvation message. And then I'm going to get off of here and um, go take care of my child. But he's watching Phineas and Ferb right now, so he's pretty, he's pretty happy. My other child isn't in here. She usually comes in here with me. God, we just thank you. We praise you and thank you, God, that you are on your throne and you are in control, that you are sovereign over all things, God. There's absolutely nothing that you do not know right at this second that is going on. So much more than we can even imagine is taking place right now, God. And you are on your throne and you are in control. And you are from everlasting to everlasting. And you have always been and you will always be, God. You are our creator, our sustainer, our protector, our provider, our shelter in the storm, our strength and our refuge. You, God, are mighty and miraculous and powerful. There is no God like you. You are the righteous judge. That will judge all unrighteousness, God. But yet you are loving and caring and compassionate and kind and patient. You want none to perish, God. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for calling us as your children. We love you with our whole heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength. And God, we just pray, we pray for the lost, God. We just pray that you would open their eyes and their ears to the truth, that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so they can be saved. We pray for the prodigals, God. We just pray that you would, uh, that they would return to you, that you would draw them back to you, God, and that they would repent of their sins, God, that you, um, that their relationship with you would be made whole again. 
God, we just pray for all the disasters that are going on, God. All the many things, all the mandates, all the laws, all the things that are causing confusion and anger and disheartened, disheartened people. God, we pray for peace. We pray for your peace that just no one can understand, God. We pray for we pray for clear headedness. We pray for truth to rise above any lies that have been told to us. God, we just pray for we pray for protection, God. We pray that you would protect us. God, we pray for all these people that are in the midst of disaster right at this moment. God, we just pray that their needs would be met, that people would come alongside them and be the hands and feet of Jesus and the loving compassion of Jesus, and that they would share Jesus with these people in their time of need. God, we pray for all the people that have lost loved ones. We just pray for peace, comfort, and strength for them. There has been so much loss, God. You are you are ushering people into your heaven. Every moment, new, new children, not new, but your children are coming home, going to their eternal forever home, God. We just praise you and thank you for sending us Jesus, that he died for us when we were sinners, God. We thank you that he died for everyone, just not just not your children. For everyone in the world, God, he died. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, pray and share, warriors. I wonder if I can make this a little bigger. No, I can. I love my new computer. Not as much as Jesus, but it is pretty handy. Okay, wow, I really love this song and message by Carrie Jo. Amen. And in parentheses, simple gospel. I absolutely love the lyrics of this song. As I listen to this song, I am listening to a messenger of God speak about fear or not, about walking in faith over fear. The church under Jesus has to stand up for truth and faith. And against the tyranny that we are experiencing in our country and all over the world, too. Australia has absolutely no freedom right now. It could come here, too. We need revival. Revival in the Church of Jesus. Not this denomination or the other one, but all that teach and preach Jesus need to stand up. Not go into the streets. I am not saying anarchy in the streets. I'm not saying that. But just say no. No more. No more of this nonsense. And much of what we have heard in the last two years is nonsense to control we the people. A disease unleashed on us for control. If we all sit down and do not say a word, we will be like the people in Australia that have no freedom to even gather outside for fear of being arrested. I listened to a story the other day where these young boys were out at the beach at night. They got caught. It was past curfew. They got thrown in jail. They got thrown in jail for being outside and getting some fresh air. It is a whole new level of ridiculous. For a disease that is 99% survivable. I say let's boost our immune system so we can fight off anything. Alright, I am so thankful to be where I am, but none of us have any guarantees of freedom. Things could change at any time. We must live by faith and not fear. Faith, faith stands for Forsaking all, I trust him, and that's Jesus. 
or fear, false evidence appearing real. So if you are afraid of something, you don't even know if it's real a lot of times. So that's what fear is, false evidence appearing real. So if you're ever afraid, just think of what fear is, false evidence appearing real. It may not even be a real thing. Okay. We must choose faith over fear. My prayer is that God will heal our land. My prayer is that God will hear our prayers. My prayer is that when Jesus comes to get us, he finds his church doing what he instructed us to do, and that is to share the gospel with others. Let the church say amen. Death is defeated. Death was defeated on the cross. When Jesus rose again, death was defeated. one place and Jesus will win Jesus will win this spiritual war that we are in the time of salvation is now do not wait come just as you are admit that you are a sinner ask for forgiveness believe that Jesus is God's one and only son and that came to save the world through his death burial and resurrection confess Jesus is your savior and lord of your life invite him into your heart so that's what I shared today. Well, this afternoon, actually, not long after I got on here. Like I said, I've been listening to people. I really enjoyed um, listening to that evangelist that I used to listen to last year, but her things just quit popping up on YouTube, and now they're back. I think that's a God thing. I think it's he's been telling me to only listen to his messengers. And you can get all bogged down into all kinds of things that may be true, but you don't know. It is better to listen to God's messengers, to listen to fellow Christians talk about what's going on. I listen to a lot of prophecy preachers that take what's going on now and they relate it back to the Bible. And I really enjoy that. I enjoy hearing those messages. Right now at our church, we're doing a series on the Minor Prophets. And uh, it's a really good series. We have an awesome pastor at our church. Okay. So tonight is the hope of the faithful and the Messiah's victory. Wow. There is no... That is totally a God thing that I was listening to that lady about faith over fear and that Jesus, Jesus is already victorious, that I wrote what I wrote and that I'm fixing to read what I read, what I'm going to read. No coincidence. That's God. It's God. It's the Holy Spirit moving us to the message that he wants us to learn. So, God, I just pray that you would open our hearts and our minds to what you want to teach us tonight and just move me aside and let the Holy Spirit speak through me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Just a quick, quick prayer. Preserve me, O God, for in you I put my trust. O my soul, you have said to the Lord, you are my Lord. My goodness is nothing apart from you. As for the saints who are on the earth, they are the excellent ones in whom is all my delight. Um, well, it says this is a Mitchum of David. I don't know what a Mitchum is. What the difference is between a Mitchum and a Psalm. Their sorrow shall be multiplied who hasten after another God. That is so true. If you are chasing after other gods, your sorrows will be multiplied. That's what God's word says. Their drink offerings of blood I will not offer, nor take up their names on my lips. Because back then when David was around, people were 
pursuing false gods. They were sacrificing their children to false gods. It's all come full circle, and it's all happening again. O oh Lord, you are the portion of my inheritance in my cup. You maintain my lot. The lines have fallen to me in pleasant places. Yes, I have a good inheritance. I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel. My heart also instructs me in the night seasons. I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. I have heard that before. Uh, maybe in some music. I shall not be moved. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. Therefore my heart is glad and my glory rejoices. My flesh also will rest in hope. For you will not leave my soul in shoal, nor will you allow your Holy One to see corruption. You will show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. And so this is what uh, this says about this psalm. It says the psalmist's faith reflected in this prayer for preservation cannot be shaken. God is present in all the experiences of life with help, counsel, and guidance. Lifelong fellowship with God brings joy. These verses are also a foretelling of the bodily resurrection of Christ. Hmm. For you will not leave my soul in shoal, nor will you allow your Holy One to see corruption. Okay, well, that is talking about Jesus. Because he's not talking about himself being the Holy One. He's talking about Jesus. You know, the whole Bible points to Jesus. Like every chapter has something about Jesus or, or points to the New Testament and what's going to happen in the New Testament. Well, that is all of 16. And we will do 17 tomorrow. Yeah, I should be here tomorrow. Tomorrow's Saturday. You know that my calendar here in my office is still on August. I need to put it on September. That might be quite helpful. Well, let's do a salvation message. I really don't feel led to read anything in the New Testament. I read something this morning and I thought, oh, that would be so good. Oh, I know. I was going to read this whole thing. Just a second. Sorry. Always just so with it. So I was going to read you this, Jesus Always, by Sarah Young. You see, Sarah Young's I use this every day, and Sarah Young's name is coming off, but it's still, it's still Sarah Young. Okay, so today, today I thought really went along with everything that's going on in our country. And surely you don't think that everything is okay. And if you do, I would suggest that you read Matthew 24 and see what lines up with what is going on today and what Jesus said would be going on in the last days. We are in the last days. I have, there is no doubt in my mind that we are in the last days because there is just too much that is lining up with scripture right now. Okay, as the world grows increasingly dark, and the world is growing increasingly dark, remember that you are the light of the world. We are the light of the world. 
Don't waste energy lamenting bad things over which you have no control. We have no control over what's going on in the world. It may be God's plan to bring Jesus back. We don't know. You know, we don't know what his plans are or what his timing is. But I do know that it's perfect. I do know that everything God does is perfect. Pray about these matters, but refuse to let them haunt your thoughts. Instead, focus your energies on doing what you can to brighten the place where I have put you. So we are to try to brighten the place where he has put us. Use your time, talents, and resources to push back the darkness. Shine my light into the world. I am the true light that shines on in the darkness, even in the most terrible conditions. Your light originates in me and reflects from you. I have called you to reflect my glory. You do this most effectively by becoming more and more fully the one I designed you to be. Spend ample time seeking my face, beloved. Focusing on my presence and my word helps you to grow in grace and discern my will. Your time spent with me nourishes your soul, finding comfort and encouragement. Thus, I strengthen you and enable you to be a source of strength for others. So we are not to worry about the things of the world. We you did say that we can pray about them, but we can't change them. So we need to just be the light where we can be. Okay, well, let's read this. Faith. Faith visit outline. But I'm visiting you online. Okay. Okay, so here's just a question that this starts with. In your personal opinion, what do you understand it takes for a person to go to heaven? And you know, anytime you can put things in the comments. You can put additions to, wow, I wish you would have read this. This would have really gone well. Just anything. Hey, this scripture really spoke to me today because I really needed to hear that. Just anything and like if you like what you're hearing. I feel like I was called here to share God's truth and the gospel of Jesus. So I try to do that every night that I'm on here. I try to read something out of the Bible, sometimes explain how it impacts me. Uh, I share a song because all I do is listen to Christian music and share how that song impacts me, how it's ministered to me, what I think about it. And um, just anything that you would like to comment. All right. Um, so if you want to put an answer to this question, go ahead. I'd like to share with you how the Bible answers this question, if it is all right. There is a word that can be used to answer this question. Faith. F-A-I-T-H. And I'm going to use my hands also to do this. F is for forgiveness. We cannot have eternal life in heaven without God's forgiveness. In him, meaning Jesus, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. Ephesians 1, 7, A. A. A is for available. Forgiveness is available. It is available for all, for everyone. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. John 3, 16. But not automatic. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Matthew 7, 21a. I. I is for impossible. 
It is impossible for God to allow sin into heaven. God is love, John 3.16, just, for judgment is without mercy, James 2.13a. Man is sinful, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, Romans 3.23. So another question, but how can a sinful person enter heaven where God allows no sin? Wow, that's a good question. T. T is for turn. If you were driving down the road and someone asked you to turn, what would he or she be asking you to do? Change direction. Turn means repent. Turn from something, sin and self. But unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. Luke 13, 3b. Turn to someone. Trust Christ only. The Bible tells us that The Bible tells us that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. Oh. According to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. 1 Corinthians 15, 3b through 4. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus, the Lord Jesus, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Romans 10, 9. H is for heaven. Heaven is eternal. Here, I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. John 10, 10 b. Hereafter, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. John 14, 3. So, H is for how. How can a person have God's forgiveness? heaven and eternal life in Jesus as personal Savior and Lord. I don't know where the leaflet is. Um, faith. Forsaking all I trust him. Having faith in Jesus. Understanding what we have shared, would you like to receive this forgiveness by trusting in Christ as your personal Savior and Lord? So I have another prayer over here. That really doesn't have a prayer with it. So I'm just going to say this one over here. No, well, maybe there's not one here. Okay, here there is one. This is from the simple simple plan of salvation, God's simple plan of salvation. Okay, so repeat this um, prayer after me if you would like to receive Jesus as your Savior. And like I said earlier, now is the time of salvation. Do not put this decision off. This is the most important decision of your life that determines where your eternal home is going to be. And there's only two. There's heaven and there's hell. There's only two. There's no in-between. There's no party place in hell. It is going to be torture. It is going to be torment. And it is going to be separation from a God that loves you so much that he created you for great things. He wants to do great things in your life. Okay. Oh God, I know that I am a sinner I believe Jesus was my substitute when he died on the cross. I believe his shed blood, death, burial, and resurrection were for me.
I now receive him as my Savior. I thank you for the forgiveness of my sins. The gift of salvation and everlasting life. Because of your merciful grace. Amen. All right. Well, if you said that prayer and if you accepted Jesus into your heart, will you do me a favor and put your name in the comments so I can pray for you? Because you are now my new brother and sis brother or sister in Christ. And uh, the angels are rejoicing and your name is being written in the Lamb's Book of Life. You are now saved, sealed, and sanctified by God through Jesus, his son. And if you would like to grow closer to God, learn more about Jesus, and receive more discernment from the Holy Spirit, then read God's word. Read God's word every day and start in Matthew. Don't start in Genesis because you're going to get in Leviticus and you're just going to go, this makes no sense. So start in Matthew. Learn more about Jesus. Learn about what Jesus did while he was here. All right. It is time to do God's blessing for all of you. In Numbers 6, 24 through 26, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. We need a world. We need world peace, but we need real peace. We don't need false peace. We need real peace that comes through Jesus. We need a Jesus movement that cannot be stopped. I am going to pray and I am going to get off of here. God, we just come to you and we just thank you. We thank you for your word. We thank you that we can live. We can walk by faith over fear. That fear is oftentimes not even real, God. But if we forsake all, and trust Jesus, forsaking all, I trust him. Jesus, if we make that our proclamation, then we can walk by faith. If we remember, if we remember who walks before us, who protects us, who surrounds us, who shows us where to go, who navigates for us, then we can walk by faith, knowing that Jesus sees what's up ahead. Jesus is our shepherd. He's going to make sure that we have water. He's going to make sure that we have food. God, thank you for sending us Jesus. God, we do pray that you would give us boldness to go out and share your truth and share the gospel of Jesus. Give us boldness to say no to all the nonsense that we hear every day. God, we are bombarded with nonsense from the time we wake up until the time we go to bed. Please help us to use the Holy Spirit to discern truth from lies. Help us to be the children that you would be proud for Jesus to come and get when he comes to get us. God, I just pray for all my friends and their families. God, I just pray for protection. I pray for provision. And I pray for uh, blessings in my family too, God. All of my family members, all the people that you have blessed me with, in family and friends, God. I am so blessed. I thank you for each and every one of them. I pray that you would bless them abundantly in their families, God. God, I just pray that you would um, help us to move forward in these dark times. God, help us to see the light just ahead. Help us to focus on that light that is just ahead of us, that light, the light of Jesus that shines all the time, God. Help us to focus on that light. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. 
All right, my praying sure warriors, we are in spiritual battle, and I hope that you pray on God's armor every day. I hope that you do. And I will add that to my thing for tonight. If you want to know what I'm talking about, I do it every day. I do it every morning. I want to do it in the morning before I start my day. I want to get that done. So um, have an awesome rest of your evening and awesome tomorrow. Tomorrow's Saturday. I am going to clean off my desk tomorrow. And I am going to start studying again on my assignment. I printed off my cards today that I can read. I had, I had written cards, but it's really hard to read my handwriting. I do better with printed. Okay, so much love. Much love. Cyber hugs till I see you again. Good night.